I feel I hardly need to ask, but is this menopause a rewarding area in which to work? I have never worked in a more rewarding uh, area. I mean, it's just, it gives me immense pleasure to support women during this difficult time. I went through a very difficult perimenopause. Um, it was a, it was a very difficult time. Um, I ironically didn't really know what was happening to me. I mean, it seems bonkers now, but if as healthcare professionals, we don't understand what's happening, um, what chance is there for, for, everybody else i mean it's just you know it, it's it's an incredibly difficult time and if you're not uh, tuned into it then um it can hit you like a, a train i mean it's, it's certainly emotionally and mentally for me it was a very difficult time um and you know i'm 60 this year and i'm still experiencing um symptoms which require hormone replacement therapy i will continue to take hrt uh, for the rest of my life and um it's it's an important part of my care for my own personal health in our practice we've had um, a wide range of women um, but what they have in common is the impact that this period of change and transition in their life is having on them and that could be relationships with their children with their family with their spouses their partners it could be that they've lost their confidence at work. Um, I had one leading barrister who had to give up her work because she could no longer stand in court. She kept losing the thread of what she was trying to say. She'd lost her confidence and she completely gave up a very thriving, um, successful career because of this period of change. What we can do by listening to someone and helping her come to an informed choice about where she wants to go with her treatment is support her in a way that means that she's engaged, she's empowered, she understands what she's doing with her hormones, she can make choices about um, dose flexibility. And the changes two to three months on are phenomenal. And women are, of course, extremely grateful. It's not why I'm doing it. What I can see is the significant change in their overall health and well-being. Women that have lost the motivation to lose weight or exercise now have that motivation. Um, and yeah, just immediately I can think of several women who who have lost a lot of weight, they've got themselves back on track, they feel attractive, they feel confident again, they're able to engage with their children, their partners, their friends in a way that they weren't. And they're rejoining and, and re-engaging in their lives. So absolutely the most enjoyable consultations to have. Um, they're just, yeah, they just warm your heart to help people in that way. Mm. And what happens if a patient's problems are more complex than you can deal with in the clinic? Is there somewhere you can refer yeah, so at, at Remedy Health, we pride ourselves on having a big network of tertiary care consultants that we can refer to if we need to. Um, and so we'll do our best to support a woman. Um, but if we feel that her problems are more complex, then we will, of course, refer on. And this could be to an endocrinologist. It could be to a gynecologist. We can refer directly for DEXA scan, for ultrasounds, and for MRIs and CTs. Uh, we do all the blood work as well, so we can support further investigations if need be. We don't fit the Myrena coil here, um, so we would refer on to our network of private uh, GPs in the area, or of course, make a referral back to the women's GP. And now for people who've been inspired by your example, is there any training or resources that you could recommend? Absolutely. I mean, there are lots of, of places um, for uh, good resources. Um, we have used the healthcare professional resources from um, Newson Health, uh, led by Dr. Louise Newson, um, a very evidence-based practice, which we support. Um, I'm also a member of the British Menopause Society, which also has a number of resources making sure 
fully understand, for example, the NICE guidance, although they're currently in the process of, of being reviewed and, and updated and they're not quite where we want them at the moment. Um, Primary Care Women's Forum as well has uh, good resources on the menopause. So, um, and of course, the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Health, because um, we shouldn't forget that many women in their perimenopause are still fertile and still can't get pregnant. So acknowledging and recognising that um, could still get pregnant and not to relax our guard and making sure that contraception is also a part of this picture um, is a really important um, part of, of the jigsaw. And now, as a result of your experiences of menopause work, are there any tips that you could offer colleagues or patients? I think for colleagues, I would say whatever your area of interest and speciality, if you're seeing a woman in your consultation room and she's suffering with mental health issues or a range of symptoms which are difficult to put in a, in a normal box, if you like, you're going through your diagnostic thinking, then please consider that this woman in front of you, she might be in her 30s, even younger, she may be going through menopausal, perimenopausal changes. And, um, you know, a number of women each year will go through um, premature ovarian failure or insufficiency, and, and many will have an early menopause below the age of 40. So I think it's important to recognise the, um, the fact that women presenting may well um, have hormone issues. I think it's also important to acknowledge and recognise that women presenting with other conditions, and this might be autoimmune conditions, anything from um, multiple sclerosis through to other um, conditions. Um, I've had a, a woman with um, really bad psoriasis um, who hadn't been on HRT improve significantly when she started HRT. Her skin looks almost normal. And so I think there are many conditions once we reduce the inflammation in the body, the disease states that have an element of inflammation, which are many, can be improved if we get our hormone levels correct. So from a healthcare professional point of view, I would say, remember to look at women through that lens. Um, from a patient's perspective, it's always about gathering as much information as you can so you understand what's happening. I think there are many myths out there about menopause and HRT, so make sure that you're well informed. Um, and that's not just from the social media aspect, it's actually looking at you know, making sure that the the evidence that you're looking at is good quality, sound evidence uh, with the appropriate data behind it. Um, and also use trackers. So um, Newson Health produce a balance tracker that you can have on your phone to monitor symptoms, to keep an eye on what's happening to you. And actually, if you think you may be going through the perimenopause, then you possibly are. You know your body better than anybody. So talk to a professional about it and and don't be put off by someone who might say to you, you're too young because we've known people go through the menopause at 18 and younger. So you wouldn't say to somebody, you're too young to get heart disease or type 2 diabetes. We just wouldn't say that to somebody. We would look at the person in front of us and do our evaluation. Deborah Evans, thank you very much for talking to us about your work and experiences in the menopause clinic at Remedy Health. That really has been terrifically interesting and we hope to hear more in the future. For more information about Deborah Evans' work, please visit our website using the link in the description and be sure to subscribe for more videos, news and journals. For updates straight to your inbox, please follow the links below. And thanks for watching.